Howdy folks, Delphi Guru here signing in for Let's Play Final Fantasy 1, Episode 7. As always, we're picking up right with Andrew Pauls in the previous episode. And we're still working towards acquiring the muddle spell which will cost us 2500 gil so that should be acquired very very quickly yeah i can definitely tell you this much the new sword mithril I've always pronounced it Mithril. I'm probably always going to call it that. I've heard it pronounced Mithril. In other... In other forums, other, you know, movies, everything. I don't think I've ever heard anyone pronounce it. That way, for Final Fantasy games, there may be some later games where it was pronounced. But... I'm honestly not sure. So, me personally, I always call it Mithril. So, to spare everyone from always going back and forth, different pronunciation, I'm always going to pronounce it the way that I am used to pronouncing it. That does not necessarily mean that is the correct way that it is pronounced. However, if anyone is aware as to its actual correct pronunciation, please feel free to let me know that I am always open to be to being educated. Let me use proper <laughs> English here. I'm always open to being educated. But, yes, the Mithril Sword is definitely a nice addition. It's making short work of most of these enemies. We're definitely, definitely get into that. You know, like I said in the previous episode, the coming around the other side of things kind of point. These fights are becoming shorter and shorter. And that brings us down to 21 gil. And just like real life, <laughs> you save up your money for something you really want or you really need. And then after the purchase has been made, you just, you know, you, you realize, you look at your bank account and you're like, man, that sucks. <laughs> it's like adulting sucks at times. I mean, it's definitely worth the purchase, whatever it, it was that you that you just bought. But it's also a very sobering reality check when you see just how much it actually cost. And now that muddle has been purchased. We are ready to uh, properly explore. And I was thinking about, uh, yeah, I better. 
I better go ahead, just to be safe, go ahead and keep Saban close to his max hit points. And at this point, doesn't really matter how you how you choose to attack. Thankfully, Saban is is in the same category that Cloud currently is at. They can both take out a Warg Wolf in one attack. And also, really quick, I do apologize about the previous episode because when I went back and and reviewed all of it, I realized that I was not actually pronouncing. I'm gonna go back in time and check on that really quick because live commentary kind of skipped out. It didn't completely pause that time, I don't believe. But I'll still go back and briefly recap what I was saying just in case anything was missed. But I had apologized for the previous episode of not properly pronouncing the G in a warg. Wolf. Kept sounding like I was saying war wolf. But I do apologize for that. I always try my best to properly announce the eight, but sometimes sometimes I can get a little a little too over overly focused on on what I'm saying that I don't realize that I'm not <laughs> properly oops, wrong button trying to open up the world map and I hit opened up the the status menu instead but sometimes I I don't properly enunciate and I, I really do apologize about that because I try my best to be properly understood all right so we're heading north to towards grief I sometimes <laughs> I get on a good roll talking and then sometimes a very basic word will trip me up but we are heading towards the abandoned castle to the north and it's important to keep your bearings in place with the map because there's only a certain way you can walk thanks to the water and sometimes it's annoying if you think you're heading the right way and then you end up getting in a dead end because of the water so that's why I've been checking the map just to try to prevent that from happening and I think sometimes the live commentary of of this recording device I think that it sometimes gets a little hung up when when a random encounter is first triggered. I don't know if it, I, I don't I don't think it actually gets overloaded. I just think it just gets hung up in that specific second. So I'm trying my best to, to keep a check on my computer screen every now and then just to make sure that it hasn't gotten hung up. It hasn't, it hasn't done it again thankfully. 
but I'm trying to do everything I can to prevent from having to do voiceovers during the editing process after the fat because that is super annoying to me not not just having to do it not just the act of having to create voiceovers but the fact that the the sound quality of a voiceover is not the same as when the live commentary is recorded in the actual recording itself so I'm trying my best to always be mindful but when it does happen I try my best to also make any corrections needed during the editing phase now this is I believe it's called the Western Keep admittedly the name of this place didn't stick around for too long so I missed it but I think it is called the Western Keep I don't believe there's anyone here except for the bats and of course the main the main resident who lives here but no there's no people there's no elves and this is this is yet another room that is locked that can only be opened with the mystic key yeah and there's also no random encounters here either which Sometimes I feel like it's a missed opportunity. Let's see what this dude has to say. Alright, so special instructions. Go to the southern marsh and retrieve the crown. Only the crown can restore this castle. It sounds like once this place has been restored to its former glory, it will be able to aid us in our quest. So. I can also showcase, show off, I also try to get away from, I think I, I think I say that word a little too much. Alright, come on world map, load for me please. Yeah, I'm trying not to use that too much. Yeah, just based on the map itself, if we continue heading north, we will run into the mountains. To the north. And there's no way to get to that next location from where we currently are. I believe we need to sail to that dock up north and then travel southwest to get to that point. So right now we are going to head back south and go toward the marsh cave I believe is what was said. But earlier, what I was beginning to say is that I always felt like it was a missed opportunity to not include random encounters in the abandoned castle. And just simply because that place really looks the part to be full of full of all kinds of creepy crawlies but at the same time it could simply look that way there may not be anything bad about that location so if there's nothing bad about it it would make sense to not have you know monsters and everything lurking therein 
Mithril Sword is also making very short work of the werewolf also. The very good news is we are completely caught up on every kind of spell we need right now. So all money that is earned is straight savings and we require right under 300 experience points in order to level up, which should be happening in the not too distant future and the one positive trade-off of your spellcasters wearing little to no armor is that their natural evasion is high so thankfully in most circumstances they will dodge physical attacks but it's the few times that they do land that can get them in trouble so here we are and I don't know if the yeah well it just says marsh B1 you know basement level 1 so this is the Marsh Cave, so I do believe I called it by its correct name earlier. This is the very first dungeon where you start off slow for that very reason. It's super simple for any of your characters to be paralyzed and when it is when it is one of your primary fighters you definitely have to make use of of magic thankfully most undead creatures are weak to both dia and fire spells. So both the white mage and black mage can be of great use. This is the first time that anyone has been afflicted with the a darkness status which is also the blind status which greatly impairs physical accuracy and unfortunately like most status ailments in the game it does stick around oh actually no take that back I take that back, it does not. So there's a different kind. That must have just been darkness then instead of blind. Okay, so that that is the, I, I remember now. That's the main difference between the two. Dark and blind. While they sound similar, they are not. Dark fades after a fight blind does not so the lamp I believe let me check really quick yeah lamp is well it says it cures darkness but that might be a typo that's either a typo or we just experienced a glitch 
with the game. And if that was a glitch, then I am defi definitely glad it was picked up on in the recording for proof that it can happen. But you want to start off simple in this dungeon. There are there are multiple levels. I can't remember how many exactly. There are multiple levels to this dungeon. The safest approach is to stick to the main level, obviously where you first enter the dungeon, and the level that we are currently on. Do not travel deeper into this dungeon. I think I said into, but yes, do not travel deeper into this dungeon until you are easily at level 15. So we just leveled up, level 13. We need right under 2200 experience to level up again. Yes, that's a good number. Yes, it could take, well, it won't take too, too long in here. Because thankfully, as, as it being witnessed, it's a, okay, cursor. <laughs> but as is being witnessed, there is a good amount of experience being, being given with each fight. And as an added bonus, this is the very first sprawling dungeon, so it naturally is going to take us a little longer to leave to get back to the surface each time. <laughs> That's funny. You can get a broadsword. We're already past that. I completely forgotten about weapons and equipment that you get here. That is, that is funny. Yeah. Too bad no one else can make use of it. But I can at least sell it later on. Here's the scorpions finally showing one. Holy cow. Yeah, that is a lot of damage. I have to not play around with that one. Get Cure 2 cast. And Fire 2 to finish it off. Or I should say in order to finish it off. And it is not finished off. So never mind. But it should be now. Okay, so... <laughs> very unintentionally just showed off a scorpion and they are much more dangerous than I remember this is where it comes in very very handy that Asuna is the only level 4 spell. I know I stated that in an earlier episode, but you just witnessed why. But this is yet another reason why it's important to be a certain level and to keep antidote on you and again another reason why having the heal spell is useful because Gargoyles tend to attack 
fast and furious. So no, that doesn't restore too much, but kind of handy because it at least restores everyone's health in a single casting. And see, that's the that's the positive trade-off. Since both heal one and cure two are considered well not considered they're, they're they're both the same spell level you always have to make that choice of which one you are going to use So we have five more times we could use Cure 2 or Heal 1. Eight more times for Fire 2. Thankfully, we're getting a jam. We have 24 more times we can use Cure 1, which really comes in handy when you are not in a fight that's actually the best i shouldn't have used that and realize it he was only 10 away but oh well but that's the best time to use it when you're not in a fight because cure one is always going to require more than more than one Casting, and I think we've already been this way, and I'm just going to double check just to be safe. But it's always going to require more than one. And another thing to keep in mind is Dia 2 is also the same spell level as Cure 2 and Heal 1. So with the White Mage, you really have to be mindful. And you really have to be careful because even though it's great that Daya is very strong against undead creatures, and especially Daya 2, since it is, you know, the next level up from Daya 1, Daya 2 is also the same spell level as cure two and heal one so you really have to keep that in mind because yes there are times where you know it's like great you know finally you know the the white mage can can contribute in a fight with with you know their magic but also keep in mind i'm, I'm having to as well real time but also keep in mind that the the white mage is your only source of healing so don't you know don't go too crazy with dia too because you could get yourself in a jam really quick And yes, I am gradually I'm gradually heading back towards the surface for now. This is again the first dungeon that teaches a lot of different lessons. One of them being that regardless you're never going to be you're never going to be fully prepared even even if you have all the items and all the spells at your disposal 
you still need to be a certain level and above. And thankfully, we're heading in that direction, but a dungeon is always a toss up. Certain dungeons are very brutal in the form of you are constantly going to be badgered and hounded by various status elements and that's bad enough but this dungeon is comprised of multiple factors that is one of them but one of the other factors is you know if an enemy isn't inflicting a character with some kind of status element you know if if that enemy isn't capable of doing such a thing then chances are they are a very hard hitting enemy so you have to watch out for both factors that's the main reason why we're heading back because as just witnessed Two characters were poisoned, thankfully we still have enough Asuna to remedy that, but now we've been brought down to three more uses of Asuna. We still have some antidotes on hand, but I always try my best to save antidotes for emergency use only. That way, I don't have to worry about somebody passing out simply because they've been poisoned and I don't have the means to, you know, cure them of said poisoning. That's just an, that's just an insult to injury kind of way to you know, potentially be wiped out and have a game over when it's a type of, of scenario that could easily be prevented if I had simply, you know, thought things through a bit more. But that is why I am doing what I'm doing. Definitely going to rest up. Not really sure where ghasts fit on the list. If they, I think they have some of the higher hit points of of the undead family, which is why I'm using Dia too, and just to be safe. Oh yeah, that, that, that must have been the case. Seeing how much experience and money was just received. And it's very easy things to get out of hand very quickly it's like here here will need to be used more than once for most everyone Still need right under 1200 experience to level up. And in regards to magic, I still have a five more uses of fire too, so I'm not going to rest up 
just yet. I want to make it a point to use up the rest of fire too, or as close to that as possible before resting up. And that's another general rule of thumb and another good practice to try to be in. You don't necessarily have to be in a rush to rest up so long as you still have some magic that can easily carry you through fights that would otherwise be a challenge if you didn't have magic. So long as you have proper magic. Get back to town, you know, stay close to town. Get in as many fights as you can until you do run out of magic. Because I know that right now the amount of experience that's being received isn't a lot compared to what was received in the dungeon, but every little bit counts. It all adds up. And once again, you will thank yourself for taking the extra time to be a level or two stronger. It will make all the difference in the world. It won't make this dungeon, you know, a walk in the park. You would easily have to be closer to level 20 in order for that to be the case but I'm not going to do that to everyone I'm not gonna I'm not even about to attempt to level grind to that extent but I'm simply saying that to put things into their proper perspective Sometimes this does require you to go to different areas because sometimes exactly where we are will generate more, you know, ogre and ogre chieftain encounters, but then sometimes it kind of does something random right now and simply loads up you know, encounters with the wolves. So sometimes you just have to move to a slightly different location. Hopefully not be poisoned, but I was. At this point, you just have to defeat the thing and then heal up. And not worth curing poison and then turning around and being poisoned again or just someone else being poisoned and having to continue to use Asuna just end the fight with one person poisoned that way you have done you, you have completed proper woo with your cursor you have completed proper damage control and kept everything from getting completely out of hand. Yeah, we're not sure we should be under. Th yeah, we are. We're un well under the 1000 experience point requirement 731 more points so we should be able to level up again before having to having to rest up I'll even take these kind of fights even though it's just one ogre 
not a lot of experience, it's easy experience. And sometimes, that's all that matters. Even if it's not a lot of experience. If it's easy experience, from a fight that you can complete in very little time with very little damage received, then it's definitely worthwhile. Now, of course, this is just like one of those really kind of moments. Like, come on, game. Now you're just toying with me. Now you're just. <laughs> now you're just wasting my time. But it really does prove the, the point and the meaning behind the name of random encounters. I mean. Because this really is random. Out of all things that could be <laughs> encountered in this area, <laughs> you come across enemies that are found at the very beginning of the game. And as stated earlier, when we were in the dungeon, Fire 2 is always the better option. It's always better to leave to leave certain damage, like magic based damage, up to your black mage. Because if you ever find yourself with your back against the wall, you always want your white mage to have plenty of MP left. In order to keep everybody hell and hearty and in some cases just alive. Definitely another rinse and repeat kind of fight. There's no rhyme or reason as to what you're going to encounter and where. So sometimes you just have to switch it up to be our last casting for fire too. Sometimes you just have to switch it up. And there really is no way to know. One more fight. Let's see what it is. <laughs> I could have gone with Fire 2 right here instead of it being wasted on that one Gigas worm, but it's all good. It's all good. Thankfully, this is another straightforward fight now that the Warg Wolf. Has been taken care of. The rest aren't a threat at all. But 
one thing I'll check on after this fight is I think that one of the one of the weapons that was found in the marsh cave was a dagger and I can't remember Okay, Black Mage is using just a knife, so, so that will come in handy. It boost the attack power from a 9 to 11. So I'm glad that I just so happened to remember that. Another rinse and repeat process. Look at great look at that, we jumped up to well over 7500 gil just in that amount of time so another rinse and repeat kind of process rest up save progress save both files just to keep everything current and then I'll get back out here and try to try to level up again. We still have plenty of time for the episode, but unfortunately, I don't think there's going to be quite enough time to travel back to the dungeon, do everything that was already done, and then back to town and keep keep everything in a decent amount of time but we only need 259 more experience points so I can easily take care of that in the remaining time and quite possibly Start making some headway towards the next level. Back in the day, as in the earlier <laughs> stages of this entire project, 80 experience points seem like a lot. And it still is a decent amount when you know you only need a few hundred experience points to level up, but by a few hundred, I mean. 500 experience points or less but now that we're easily into the 2000 experience point requirement 80 experience points is not a lot but that's also one of the ways that the game forces <laughs> whether a player is aware of it or not. But it's one of the ways that the game forces players to head on into the next dungeon and not try to level grind too much. I mean, it's always, it's always going to be possible to level grind even off of the most basic of enemies but the real question you have to ask yourself is why you know and do I really want to invest this kind of time in doing such a thing because yeah like stated earlier eighty experience points sounds nice but when you need at least two thousand experience points that's just that's just too many fights 
that to get into. That's just too much work for a single level up. And again, that's kudos and credit to the programmers, to the developers of of this game. But that's also the nature of any given RPG. However, the original Final Fantasy was one of the first RPGs that created the formula. And with each passing Final Fantasy game and countless other RPGs, so many other RPGs have simply expounded upon the concept and have added to it in so many different ways over all these countless years that have passed since Final Fantasy 1 originally released. Alright, so everyone is now at level 14 and everyone requires 2,421 experience points to level up again. So, not gonna make a lot of progress here in this in this area, but still gonna test things out and and see what all we can run and do. And that's the first time I honestly say that that has been witnessed. And that's another factor with a good bit of RPGs. Once you reach a certain level, some monsters will just straight up start running away from you. I'm like, uh-uh. <laughs> uh-uh, I guess they can just sense how powerful Everyone has to come and they're like, peace out. Nope, not today. And they just leave. They run away so they can live to see another day. Bunch of cowards. and what all we can run into in this area. I'd always thought that there were more undead creatures through here, but I guess it's more of the same work of the ogre type family. Now if all of the gigas worms stick around, it's not a ton of experience but it's definitely better than if you had simply fought a single ogre and that was it. No, look, a variety. Burn, baby, burn. And just like that. Believe it or not. Okay, come on now. But believe it or not, it is already time this episode to come to a close and wow I mean really well at the money we've already said that we've already saved up almost another 3,000 gil in just a few minutes that's that really is beyond insane but I want to take a brief break right here and as always I'll be continuing and the next episode, we will 
dive deeper into the marsh cave. Hopefully be able to complete it. But there will be a good bit of bat tracking again like in this episode. But thankfully, I'll be heading straight for the dungeon in the next episode, so hopefully a lot more progress will be made. As always, thank y'all so much for tuning in, and I'll catch y'all in the next episode. LP Guru, signing out.